Merci, Henri. Thank you, Henri. Madam President of the Federal Republic of Ethiopia, Mr. President of Sierra Leone, dear colleagues and friends from the, Uni from the United Nations uh, family, Madam Kenisha Ms. Kenisha Aurora, representative of youth at the High Level Steering Committee on Education, ladies and gentlemen, ministers, of whom there are very many here, which I am very pleased to see at this summit, representatives of states, representatives of the whole educational community, students, teachers, representatives also of regional organizations, of youth. Thank you for being here. And welcome to all of you to this house, which is your house, which is the house of peace and of education. Today, we are meeting around this goal which underpins all others, education, to prepare in this house, UNESCO, for this important meeting, which we have been invited by the Secretary General of the United Nations, the week on the transformation of education in September, which is going to attempt to put education in its proper place, which is to say the very top of the international agenda. There should be a time for action a time for commitment, a time for concentration on these priorities, which we have defined and elaborated together here at UNESCO. And during this pre-summit, and I think I can already see that here, there are already more than 2,000 participants meeting to discuss these educational issues with two heads of state who are particularly committed to our work on education, and I'll come back to this. Many, many ministers and also our sister agencies and colleagues from the United Nations and then those who work with education every day in their countries. All of you are very welcome. We are meeting at a time which is quite crucial. We're very far from the path that the international community set forth in its 2030 Agenda for Education. And the pandemic, even if it has made us fall behind in time, does not explain everything. At the beginning of 2020 at UNESCO, before the beginning of the COVID pandemic, 259 million children were estimated not to be in school. That is to say, one out of six in that age category, and six out of 10 do not finish secondary school. And among adults, we still see, and that's why this lifelong learning objective should not be forgotten for adults either. Among adults, we have more than 710 million people who cannot either read or write, two-thirds of whom are women, which also reflects the persistence of gender inequality. But of course, the pandemic has only worsened those inequalities. And the figures that we have published last week together with UNICEF, the World Bank, and other partners who I'd like to thank, show this. So we see that in low- and middle-income countries, the number of 10-year-old children unable to understand a simple short text has gone from one-third to 70 percent during the pandemic in that age group. And of course, in conflict zones, the right to education has been even more strongly impacted. In conflict situations, situations such as we see in Afghanistan also, where we see an unacceptable dropping off in the right to education for women and for girls in conflicts as in Ukraine, where since February 24th, two-thirds of children have been obliged to leave their homes and break off their studies. And at the same time, this pandemic has shown us something else very paradoxically. By the absence of school, it has shown us how much education is truly an international public good and to what extent the school is a pillar that structures society over and above education itself. 
And the fact we are meeting here today means that we know this and we believe that we have the power to change things. Because during this pandemic, we also collectively showed that we were able to coordinate more and to support the right to education more. Since the beginning of 2020, the beginning of the pandemic, in a few days here at UNESCO, with many of you here, we managed to set up a worldwide coalition for education, for continuity of education, and to reopen schools. And we saw the results of this. More than 170 partners, both public and private, were mobilized and allowed us to act together in more than 100 countries, mostly in Africa, for distance learning and to encourage the reopening of schools, which is so essential. And we need the same coordination and the same concentration on essential factors today. This is a massive undertaking. It's not only about protecting the right to education everywhere and for everyone. It's also about transforming learning. Because 21st century education must respond to the needs of the 21st century and to its challenges. We must bring about a true Copernican revolution in education, especially in response to the issues of digital transformation, of course, but climate disruption as well. And we do not start from scratch. This is also a message I would like to send here this morning. We have to build on what we have and on the work we have done. We don't have to reinvent it. And we have two powerful and recent initiatives that I'd like to mention. The first one is a vision, a direction, established by UNESCO's report on the futures of education. It has to be a reference for the Transforming Education Summit. And I would like here to thank our International Commission on the Futures of Education, in particular its chair, the President of Ethiopia, Her Excellency Saleh Wokzude, who honors us with her presence today. I'd like to thank as well the commissioner that are with us today or online. And this crucial report catalyzes a global debate, a global conversation on how knowledge, education, and learning need to be reimagined in a world of increasing complexity, uncertainty, and fragility. It underlies, among other things, the need to develop critical thinking, notably through media and information literacy, which has become essential in all parts of the world. The need as well to mainstream education on nature, on sustainability, and now it's the time for every single country to take ownership of this report and to make it a tool for change. And the test is an opportunity for that as well, to be a strong moment of uh, sharing of this, uh, of this uh, report. To set international cooperation in motion, we also have a second tool at our disposal. I'm thinking of our new global architecture for education, which we collectively strengthened last year. We now have a high-level steering committee that is more effective and more responsive. And it is leading global coordination in education. And here I would like to thank the other president present this morning, Mr. Julius Madabio, president of Sierra Leone, who accepted to co-chair the high-level steering committee for SDG4 with UNESCO for this, uh, for this uh, and I thank him for his commitment and his presence today. Alors, pour conclure, mesdames et messieurs, nous avons devant nous l'objectif peut-être le plus ambitieux. Et... To wrap up, ladies and gentlemen, I'd say that we have the, the strongest and most ambitious challenge we have to tackle. But if we don't do so, we will never manage. Education is a public good. It is delicate, it is fragile, but it is the best possible investment we can make. This pre-summit gives you all a great opportunity to share your experience, share our priorities, and set a joint course. 
This is a multilateral summit, but it must also be an opportunity for each and every one of you to uh, structure your national agendas. Thank you all for joining us, and thank you also to the youth representatives for joining us today.